because uh, the human intellect allows us to uh, virtually see what no other creatures that God has made can see. And that's, you can, you can see your future, what Allah has in store for you in the future. And you can make a choice. We have a free choice to choose the future that's going to benefit us, that's going to uh, benefit humanity. And uh, through faith, we learn that uh, we're not here alone. Imam was mentioned about the individual can make progress. But the true progress for the human being is the social progress. Mm -hmm. right. And together, we can see our social, we can see our beginnings, and we can see our future. Uh, and on, on, a, on a kindergarten level, I learned at a, at a young age that the moral path and the ethical path that the Imam so eloquently presented to us for the past hour or so, hour and a half maybe, uh, the ethical path, that's the path that the human being with this great intellect, uh, when you engage it with the material reality that you live in, the ethical path is the best, is always the best path, the, the best path. Uh, and all we need to do is just ask ourselves, I was sitting here thinking this, the people that, that have problems and and that we see deceiving themselves, making trouble for the world, thinking they have power to, that they don't have. Um, all they have to do is ask themselves to make the connections to their actions and see what they're doing and where does that lead? You know, if you would look, they put up blinders. They think because they don't see something, they cover their eyes like a little child that's no longer there. So, but they know what's at the end of the road of uh, immoral acts and uh, uh, just wicked behavior, you know? And, uh, and as, a ch as a boy, I saw, you know, immediately, you know? Bad behavior got me reprimanded. I was either, <laughs> you know, I would get physical. They don't allow you to do that now, you know? <laughs> but I would get physically reprimanded many times, you know? And uh, a lot of times, you wish somebody would physically reprimand you because I see the hell that a lot of the, uh, Weak, weaker people in our society, the paths they follow, the results of their actions lead them into uh, terrible, terrible situations, and they suffer great loss. And, um, and it hurts us as a whole. We can't just be righteous in a corrupt society and still have the peace that we need. We have to still worry about our brother and sister. And, uh, and just ask them to take a deeper look at the situation before they act on the situation. Use that intellect, it's the greatest gift. If it's the greatest gift you ever had. I never seen nobody say, take a, say, well, you got the best piece of the pie. This is the, this is the best part of the meal. This is the, well, I ain't gonna lie, I seen some people, a lot of people, those are the ignorant ones, they gobble it down real quick. I like to take my time and savor it. I'll be the last person at the table. I think I'm probably still, y'all can tell, I'm still the last person at the table. I sit down and I enjoy my pie, eat a little bit at a time. You know, I watch TV while I'm eating it, you know. You know, you just don't gobble it down. So it's the, it's the best, best, the intellect. That's, you know, that's, that's the gift that Allah gave us that can save us from many problems and, and trouble that we see down the road. We can actually uh, make the good life that we want for us as a society. And, uh, and all we have to do is reflect on the history of man. And societies that have worked together to improve themselves, to improve, improve the condition of their lives, have achieved great things. Those are the ones that are written down in history, and that are, you know, and we can be that type of community. And Allah, I believe Allah plans that for us, for us to have an honorable uh, uh, place in the history of man as being uh, a community that Allah has raised up on, on uh, in His way. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, I didn't come up here to give a cup by, I just, I'm just bear witnessing like you ma'am said. See, I listen. I don't, I'm not always there with a pen taking notes, but uh, uh, I, uh, I'm listening. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. And uh, so uh, we have a, the Moss Cares, uh, I think our next major program, we, we have already started. Uh, Sister Robin, if she can hear me, 
I want to give out the number for the uh, weekly calls. And Imam Elam, he's, he, if he's nearby, uh, we've started the planning committees for our Ramadan sessions and also for the convention, uh, the 2016 uh, annual Muslim convention under the Mosque Cares, Ministry of Imam W.D. Muhammad. And I'm, I'm looking at this Graceline magazine. It's, it's amazing what Allah will do for good, you know? And, yes, and I always say, I, have these sim I, I like these simple philosophies or whatever you might call it, things that, that help me. That Allah is with good. He's with righteousness, you know? He doesn't support wrong. So we should never worry that something is going to be lost because it looks like the people are being deceived or a good, or a good number of people are doing things that's not becoming of a Muslim. Uh, if we don't have the power to to follow the prophet, that, like he says, to try to stop it or to do something about it with words, deeds, or action, then we should know that Allah is not with that plan right. and that he's with the, the uh, what he has established uh, uh, and what we know of as justice in his uh, in his creation. Allah's justice is not just for human beings. Allah's justice is clocked in all of his creation, everything. Everything we see and hear and do. And uh, if we would just use our intellect to engage Allah's creation and our thoughts and our mind to see what is just and what is unjust, the path is easy, you know. And, uh, and Allah is with the just. He blessed us we have seven books. I lived my entire life with Imam Muhammad, and uh, I wish this wasn't my position to say that our greatest, through my lifetime, what I've seen, our greatest blessing was Imam W.D. Muhammad. It's a fact, and we still benefit from it. You know, uh, I wasn't around in the glory days of the Nation of Islam. As a matter of fact, he didn't know when his father was going to pass, but he sent me to Montessori school so that he wouldn't have to, uh, I guess, reprogram me or anything. <laughs> you know, he had raised me, and and I assume he was pleased with me. I was a little, I was about four or five. Like I'm pleased with my son. My son, we were all getting ready to come over here um, to the first Sunday, and. This time I'm the first one. Usually I'm the last person to get in the car. I said, I'm going to try a different strategy. I'm going to get in the car first and see how quick they get in the car. I think they're waiting on me. So I got in the car first. Everybody came hopping in the car. And my little, my little five-year-old coming in the car. And he was just lit up. He was beaming, smiling, eyes was bright. You know, I, I'm sitting in the car watching him walk down the steps into the garage. He jumped in the car. And then he sat down. I had to turn around and ask him. I said, you know, I said, hey, man, how you doing? You know? And he said, I like going to the first Sunday. He said, I want to go to the first, I'm going to the first Sunday. I said, Allah Akbar. And I said, man. I said, I look back, I thought to myself, I said, I said, I wonder if I was like that when I was a little boy, you know? I said, when I was hit when I was his age. That is such a mercy and such a blessing to have that peace. And but believe it or not, that happiness that we see in the babies. Allah wants that for us now. Our society that we live in is a deception. It's, uh, it's been corrupted by shaitan. And everywhere you look, you see people not happy. Not happy uh, because they're not living a good life that they should live. They're not being uh, true to themselves and, uh, and not using their good senses, you know. But we should reflect sometime. If we think that we stuck in a rut or something and that that uh, this is just the way things are, just go find your little child <laughs> and ask them what you smiling about. Look at them, and they, they be so happy, you know. They, you know, they, they don't carry the burdens we carry, but Allah don't want us to carry, carry those burdens either. We, we should be happy just like them. So when I leave here today, I'm going to go spend some time with little Barack. <laughs> that guy, he's something else. It's a blessing, such a great mercy uh, to have... Uh, a good future, you know, and we live through our families, so we have to cherish our families and our youngsters. And uh, the more we sacrifice for our, not for ourselves, for the our, 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 uh, selfishly, you know, because uh, I used to see my father. My father, he didn't, uh, 
uh, when he first came in the office, he had a closet full of real nice suits, top of the line. He, I think he drove a Cadillac. Y'all don't remember the Cadillac. He had a blue Cadillac. Yeah, blue Cadillac. It was sharp too. I rode in it. I remember, but he had about a hot minute a week. But he was the happiest person I, kn I knew. Uh, and it was not because he did for himself, because uh, people used to, you know, look at him and turn up their nose, African Americans, because, you know, during the 70s, we was into, just look at some old photographs of African Americans in the 70s. We look more like a bunch of male peacocks or something than, a, than human beings. You know, like just all different colors and flash and glitter and all of that stuff. And Imam Muhammad was the opposite of what was popular. He, was, he lived a simple life, but he enjoyed life. And uh, that's where true happiness comes from, is for the sacrifices that you, you do for others. And he sacrificed for us. And I thank Allah. And I, I didn't come into, the, into, the off, into his office after his passing thinking that I was going to be successful uh, at any, of, uh, any material aspirations. But I had many, many and aspirations and I wanted to produce, I knew the job that needed to be done and I wanted, I wanted to produce a thousand books. If I could have had them done by right now, this year, it's almost seven years, right? Yeah. I'd have had a thousand books done. But I'm still, I still can't help but to recognize that we are able to put seven books together in less than six years and three magazines in less than six years. And I saw my father's payroll sometime. I used to go to the bank and make the deposits. I know what kind of money was being moved around. And uh, we were able to accomplish great things uh, that I didn't see happen over a period of 30 years. You know, there were some books produced, but uh, they, you know, uh, you know, Imam Muhammad was giving hell just to try to produce simple things. So if this is not a sign, then I don't know what we need to see and hear, you know. That, uh, if Allah is blessing us now, we need to jump on board and ride this blessing as far as we can take it. Allah is with us. His mercy is on us. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's blessing our good works, our sacrifices. And I think, uh, I think that, um, that uh, Allah's mercy is with us. You know, we should be grateful. We, can, we should be more grateful. More thankful. And this, this is a beautiful book. And even the, everything is in favor of, for us today. Uh, everything is favoring us. I couldn't pray for the help, but when you go out ahead and uh, and make decisions and go out on your own and don't obey Allah, then you can make mistakes and think, well, hey, I need I need an army to stop the enemies that we have, or we need to do something drastic, or maybe we need to just sell out Imam Muhammad altogether and go to somebody else. And see what they, how far they can carry us, you know. And when you make those hasty moves like that, you done made the wrong move. When it's when it's life or death, you you might you may have uh, destroyed yourself. And with one bad move, you destroy yourself. But with a little patience, the true boss that's in charge of everything, the Lord and Master of the heavens and the earth, all that's in the earth, and in you and me, and everything in between, He's in charge. And then you come with the internet, and what we would probably would have paid some. Man. I don't know how how big a staff usually produced magazines 15, 20 years ago oh, of this quality. Thousand. And how much money? This this is a hundred thousand dollar project. A hundred thousand dollar project. You know, so y'all the community y'all are robbing a hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Abdullah, oh, yeah. uh, for this magazine alone. <laughs> Abdullah. But Allah is merciful. Allah is so merciful and so wonderful. All we have to do is be patient. And I think about lives people live, and I look at how just our circumstances have changed over the past five or six years. And think about the people that passed away that didn't get to see. You know, instead of rejoicing about the wonderful things that happened in my life, sometimes I feel sad first for the people that didn't, that's not here to see what we saw. You know, we riding around in Chicago, potholes and this and that, they fixed the expressway. And uh, I remember a couple people close to me had passed away. I said, man, they didn't get to ride on this expressway. I couldn't enjoy it, my first ride. <laughs> and a lot of my witness, I couldn't enjoy it. 
I said, man, they missed this. You know, just simple things like that. Allah's mercy is always there. And then you have to wonder, why did he bless you? Do you deserve that? Are you giving back to your community? 